Hey everyone, hi, Marsha Grace here, your Calm Creativity Connector. Good to be back. Uh, I'm so happy that uh, um, the rain is over for today. <laughs> Maybe we'll get out and take a walk later, I'm hoping. Uh, well, uh, I am here in the calm, in the center of the storm. And I'm here because, as for anyone who's been here before knows, uh, I like to really make it clear that there is a way to view your feelings and your experiences differently so that you can discover the solutions that you have within you to find the answers that you need for your business and for your personal concerns, even in the face of all of what we're going through, uh, all the uncertainty, all the doubt, all the um, concern for other people that we love and uh, for our businesses, for uh, for our personal relationships that may be going south at this point. We've been <laughs> together so much. Uh, uh, but in spite of all of those things, <laughs> because life is like that, right? Life is just like that. Uh, there, there is just always um, another issue, something else to handle, to deal with. And, and so, you know, we seem to have enormous problems now, but we know they never go away. <laughs> so, uh, so it really is, to me, this is like such an essentially perfect time for those of us who were uh, quarantined at home to uh, take the opportunity to discover your inner wisdom, because that's where all your answers are. They're all within you. That's where you could find whatever it is you need if you're willing to do the work. So uh, today uh, I want to talk about something I keep talking about constantly. Hi, Lorraine. I'm glad you're here. Um, which is stress. And I, I said stress kills, and I know that's a, that's a really strong statement, but it's true. Uh, I think so many of our illnesses, and, and this is borne out by an article that I just recently read, which is I have I printed out here. Um, Chronic stress puts your health at risk from the Mayo Clinic, because that's my favorite place to go for medical information. I feel that they are um, worthy of being listened to. Uh, they're highly rated and... Um, you know, just have the experts that I, I trust. So, um, yeah, so I'm talking about stress so much because that's what I do. I try to help people uh, handle their stress. It's not something we'll ever get rid of, and I'm very clear about that. We, can, we should never think that we're going to suddenly find a way to live a stress-free life. It just doesn't work that way. But we can certainly learn how to handle that stress and what I, I like to shift the focus, right? So I like to shift it from calling a stress, a situation stressful to calling it an opportunity. And I think that makes a big, big shift in how we even think about uh, what's going on in our, in our thoughts. So, but that's another story. I can talk about that another day. I really want to get into uh, what I, um, uh, my theme for today, which is about how seriously important it is to deal with your stress because it'll kill you. Maybe not tomorrow, although in ca some cases, maybe tomorrow, because if you have a heart attack, <laughs> uh, you may not survive. So, uh, so yeah, so that's why I, it's really, really important. And, and I know it's important, you know why? Because uh, last week, I think I mentioned this uh, uh, last week, that uh, I listened to um, a presentation of uh, a number of doctors from Stony Brook University at the medical school. And uh, they, uh, they were doing this whole presentation on stress. And why is that? Because they know it kills, that's why. So they want you to get, do the things you need to do in order for you not to die. So I think that's important. And so that's why I'm revisiting this issue today because I want to talk about that some more. But as we always do, we begin with our um, breathing and our meditation, a little meditation today. So uh, let me get my candle, here's my candle. It's very low, I'm gonna have to get a new candle soon. <laughs> uh, all right, so the breathing that we're gonna do today 
is, um, I think we ought to do it. It's the end of the week, right? We've been through, of course, who knows what day it is anymore, really. But um, for some of us who are still maintaining some kind of a regular schedule, um, uh, it's Friday. And hopefully there, that brings uh, some sense of, um, oh, it's Friday, you know, the end of the week. And I can, you know, kind of loosen up and let go and, and have a little fun. Uh, so <sighs> be that as it may, um, a great breath to do when you just want to let go is what I call the letting go breath, <laughs> for lack of a better name. <laughs> and the way this works is really, really simple. You just breathe in really, really full, expanding the chest, puffing everything up and out. You hold it for three beats, and then you <sighs> really, really just sigh it out. Um, my yoga teacher calls it the sighing breath. Uh, so if you want to be a little more gentle about it, you can <sighs> But as you're doing that, really press in on your on your lungs so that you and, and on your belly so that you get all the breath out. We're going to do that three times. And you'll notice too that your body will start to, you'll expand and you'll lift up and then you'll contract and you'll push in. Okay, so that's the way this works. So we're gonna count to, let's do six. So count to six, breathing in through the nose, hold four, three, and then we're gonna sigh or blow or however you wanna do it. Nobody else is listening, I hope, so you can do whatever you want. And, uh, you know, on the out breath and, and do that for six if you can. Okay, so, okay, here we go. Breathing in, two, three, four, five, six, Hold, two, three, sigh it out, two, four, five, six, okay, in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, blow it out, two, three, four, five, six, one more time, in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, blow it out, two, three, four, five, six. <sighs> All right, so how does that feel? Hi, Michael, good to see you. <laughs> All right, yeah, hi, Rana, glad you're here. Okay, so um, just let that settle in, okay? Let that Oh, all that nice oxygen that you just received uh, flow to every little cell in your body. <sighs> just notice and let your sh shoulders drop. Make sure your jaw is loose. <sighs> just let your spine be easy, upright but easy. And notice if you're holding your belly in or your thighs are contracted, let them go. Those are the big muscles that we tend to scrunch, especially when we're stressed. So you wanna loosen them up and let them go. As we close our eyes, oh, you know what? I didn't light the candle, didn't I? So, all right, let me light the candle. So for those of us who like to look at the candle, but for everybody else, close your eyes and just know that in this moment, the past is over, the future hasn't come yet, and so we have this precious moment, which is full of all possibilities. Hmm. That's nice to know, right? All possibilities exist in the moment. And to help us to uncover what those possibilities may be, I'd like you to think of your favorite color. What's your favorite color? And I want you to think of why it's your favorite color. What is it about that color that you love? You know, I mean, uh, I, I'll tell you later what my favorite color is, but whatever your favorite color is, just imagine you are surrounded in a bubble of that color and it makes you feel good because you love this color for whatever reason. 
whether it brings you a sense of comfort or peace or relaxation or fun or joy, what, whatever it may be. So surround yourself. Just imagine you're sitting in this bubble of your favorite color. And we're going to take a minute or two and I want you to just notice how you feel while you're surrounded by your favorite color. How do you feel? How does your head feel? How does your body feel? How, how are you feeling emotionally? And, and just check it out. Just notice, to do a little inner inventory just for a moment or two. Coming back now, you can let your color bubble disseminate into the air and just sit for this moment or two and just think of how good that felt. And you can take this color bubble with you wherever you go. Anytime you're feeling stressed, just find a quiet spot where you can sit down and surround yourself in this favorite color of yours. Okay, so when you're ready, we'll take, let's take one more slow, deep breath in. And release it. And then you can open your eyes if they're closed. And we're back. All right, I'm going to put out the candle. And let's talk about our topic today. Because it's really, really, really important. And thank you, Michael. And I really want you to get the import of this because, you know, we have a tendency, especially as business owners or business people, you know, when you're working in the world and you're, you know, you're um, uh, responsible for so much uh, to, to really kind of uh, downplay uh, your own feelings and your own bodily experiences. I mean, I, I can't tell you, I, I've, I've worked with so many people who are just not even aware that they're in pain. Uh, and and uh, and yet other things, which we're going to talk about in a minute, uh, will uh, come to, to the fore once you notice them, and then you'll say, ah, okay, yeah, uh, I am in pain, <laughs> and 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 then we recognize it, and then you can do something about it because you if you're blocking out your awareness that you have a problem, uh, you're not going to be able to take care of it, right? So that doesn't make sense. All right, so. Stress kills, and it kills because uh, there are, um, uh, w when you get stressed, what happens is there's a, a whole process that takes place in the body, and the, uh, this article in the, in the um, uh, by the Mayo Clinic really addresses that. It says, um, uh, adrenaline increases your heart rate, so when you perceive an attack, you start to, uh, your, well, actually, it starts with your hypothalamus, uh, which is at the brace, base of your brain. And that sets off an alarm in your body. And then a bunch of signals start flowing back and forth. <laughs> and uh, this prompts your adrenal glands, which happen to be on top of your kidneys down in here someplace, uh, to release a bunch of hormones. And this is where the problem is. It's these hormones of uh, adrenaline and cortisol that really begin to create problems. 
Now, under normal circumstances, they're helpful because if you are threatened by a uh, saber-toothed tiger, for instance, um, you know, you, you want to run, right? So you're going to need the fast push that the adrenaline is going to give you. It's going to put wings on those feet and you're going to take off and get away from that beast. But we don't have too many of those around. And, you know, it's not a lot of saber-toothed tigers around these days. However, we do, of course, experience stress in so many other ways. And, uh, and then when that adrenaline kicks in, we don't want to run necessarily. And so, but that hormone is still in your system. And it's, it, what it does, now let me just get to this. It increases your heart rate. It elevates your blood pressure. And it boosts your energy, as we said right there. That's what the adrenaline does. Cortisol, on the other hand, which is the primary stress hormone, uh, increases your sugars in your body, in the bloodstream, and enhances your brain's use of the glucose uh, to make it available for tissue repair. So, you know, that, and that's important if you have an injury, for instance, right? Because that's a trauma to the body is a stressor. And so, you know, you need that. Okay. So, but cortisol does something else. And what that is, is that it curbs the functions that are considered non-essential or even detrimental when you're in a fight or flight situation. So it alters your immune system. Now, what's more <laughs> important to us right now? We don't want to alter our immune system, do we? No. Uh, it suppresses the digestive system it, uh, and the reproductive system and growth processes. So if our children are stressed, oh my goodness, this is a serious, serious matter. So. Uh, so this is something to really, that's why, I, that's why I keep talking about this, and this is why it's the focus of my life, is to help people learn how to de-stress. So, 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 so important. Okay, so um, how do we know we're stressed? Let's, let's talk about that. How do we know? And as I said, a lot, a lot of times we lie to ourselves, or we try to pretend like we're not. And so, oh, it's not so bad, it'll go away, but it's still there. And we're not addressing it, which makes it even worse because those hormones are doing their thing and they're causing all kinds of havoc. So uh, one way uh, is to notice if you've got pain or aches in your body on a regular basis. I mean, if you fell over your chair or something and you hit your knee, <laughs> uh, you know, stands to reason you should have a pain. But if you're achy and painy, you know, like all the time, that's something that needs looking into. And of course, if you're older and you might have arthritis, uh, again, that's that's a, the cause of that. I think a lot of it, because I, I know at my age, and I'm not a kid, um, I, I have barely any arthritis, a few little arthritic areas in my, you know, because as you get older, you just have that. But I mean, you know, I look at uh, people's hands, you know, that, that are all, and they're all bent and twisted and stuff like that. And, I, I, and, I, and some of it might be um, a genetic. Uh, I, I guess that's true. Uh, I'm not... You know, I'm not, that's not my expertise, but, uh, but nonetheless, nonetheless, uh, pains and aches that are frequent or ongoing need to be looked into, whether it's actually some kind of bodily problem or if it's stress. Now, there are other ways, of course, now, if this is in conjunction with some of these other things, and you're going to know for sure. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we all do. We all do, Michael. So, uh, next thing. Um, do you get frequent colds or do you get infections that don't heal quickly? Again, this is, this is another thing that will tell you that your body's experiencing stress. I haven't had a cold in, I don't know, quite a long, long time, a, a long time. And, and I really um, attribute it to, you know, not, not allowing myself to be stressed for any length of time. So notice that. Notice if you frequently got a cold. If, it, if you're getting a cold every month or two, again, this is a sign. So notice that. And if you've got aches and pains on top of that, well, okay, now we really have to look at this. All right, another thing. Um, how, is your, how are you sleeping? How are you sleeping at night? If, you, if you're uh, twisting and turning, you can't fall asleep. Um, or, and the, the, this happens with a lot of people too, is you fall asleep right away, but then you wake up. And it's three o'clock in the morning and you can't go back to sleep. That's also not a good thing. So again, just add these little things up. Give yourself a number, 
for each one of these and see what your number is. So from one to 10, let's start back again. From one to 10, um, how, how often do you have aches and pains? Is it every day? Is it once in a while? Give you between one and 10, you decide, whatever. 10 is the most and one is never, okay? Uh, the second one is about um, uh, frequent colds. How often do you get a cold? Never is, is one or zero and 10 would be, you know, once a month. Um, poor sleep patterns. If you have any trouble sleeping at all, anywhere in between there. Maybe it's not an, a zero, maybe it's not a 10, but maybe it's somewhere in between. So take these numbers down. The next one is, how about this? Do you find that all of a sudden something just gets you furious and you just burst out? You know, you might take it out on someone that you love, right? We always hurt the one we love. So you, you, let, you let go on someone and, and give them uh, the business and it comes out of nowhere. You know, a mood swing, you know, you, you were happy a minute ago and then boom, all of a sudden something sets you off. That's a sure sign you're under stress. Again, give yourself a number, one to 10. Where, where do you fall into that? Um, and then there's this depression. Now, that, we could talk about depression just by itself. That's, that's a topic all, all, all within itself. However, if you are feeling like you don't have the energy to get up and do anything, you know, you're sitting and uh, binge watching Netflix night and day, you don't get dressed, you know, during this time, uh, you're, you're um, hitting the refrigerator every three minutes to see what else is in there, uh, or eating a whole box of cookies, you know, this kind of stuff. This is a sign of depression, okay? And again, it's not so obvious. I mean, when you start to really look at it, you see it certainly is. But in terms of we can always rationalize these things. You know, we are great at rationalizing why we should have another cookie. I mean, I'm good at it. I know that. <laughs> I don't know about you, <laughs> but I know I am. So, and you have to really be honest and look at it and say, is this really worth it? Is this helping me accomplish what I want to achieve? Is it helping me be successful in my life and get the things done that I know I need to do? So those are the things you want to ask. All right, one more, really, really, oh, two more. A high blood pressure, did I mention that? I don't think so. Okay, so if you have high blood pressure, well, right away, you know. And if you're on medication, I, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not against medications. I'm not one of those, I'm not a purist, but I do, try not to take medications. I, I take one, one thing, uh, one prescription on a regular basis, and that's it. That's it. But you know, again, everybody's situation is different. However, if you've got a, a closet full of prescriptions, oh my goodness, um, I think you could use a little help with learning how to let some of that stress go that's, that's creating those situations. Because what I find with people who are popping pills all the time is they have stomach issues, they're taking all kinds of pills for stomach problems, um, they've got the high blood pressure, they've got, uh, maybe they're even taking something for anxiety, you know, whatever. And that, again, that's um, a sure sign that you, you really want to get some other kind of help because pills alone are not the answer. I mean, they'll help, to some extent, but then they create other problems. So, and then the last one I wanna talk about, which is, and this is gonna be important to a lot of people who may be listening, <laughs> that is have a loss of your sex drive. Remember when I mentioned about those hormones and how they shut certain things down? Cortisol will do that. It'll, it'll cut, it'll shut down um, your, your libido so that you know, so that you're missing out on all that fun, right? So, so uh, again, I think that um, might be something that uh, you notice and stop making excuses. Oh, I'm too tired. Oh, I'm just not in the mood. You know, it, it, different things, you know, again, we can fool ourselves and say um, there's a good reason for why, um, uh, you know, why I'm not feeling uh, loving or affectionate with my partner or I'm uh, not able to sleep or I, you know, I'm, you know, sad. All of those things we can make excuses for. However, 
you take those all in combination. Again, add up your numbers and see what your numbers are. And uh, you know, I, had to, I haven't sat down and figured out what <laughs> the score should be, but you'll know, you know, you know if you're in trouble. If you're, any, if you're over five on any one of those and, and you have more than one or two, or you have more than two or three, then definitely uh, you want to address this. And I'm here to help. I'm here to help. And I will be offering a program, an online program, of course, uh, coming up real soon. I've been working on it and uh, it'll help. it's all about de-stressing. And uh, I'll let you know more about that when I'm ready. But of course, in the meantime, I have for you uh, my uh, guided meditation that you could check out. I, I was having some issues online with, uh, with that uh, link. I hope it's resolved. If it isn't, please drop me an email and let me know because uh, I really hope that you can avail yourself of uh, my free guided meditation. So if you enjoyed this little conversation on stress kills, what a wonderful topic, right? <laughs> very uplifting, <laughs> um, but very important. And that's why I say this over and over again. So if you enjoyed this conversation, please give me a like, share it, share, because this is valuable, very valuable information that people need to, to recognize, to really see that, hey, I'm in trouble and I really need to reach out and get help somehow from someone I consider an expert and um, so that I can pull myself together and, and have a more fulfilling and rewarding and a better life in my in my business and with my family so by all means share it okay and as i oh, oh you know what i wanted to mention oh i didn't bring it over here okay I'll, I'll read it next week uh yeah so so i'm back to fridays only which um i kind of missed <laughs> seeing everybody this week but uh uh it got it gave me the time to to do other things with which was good so i will see you next friday and as i always say Everything begins with a thought, so keep your thoughts light. Have a great week. Bye-bye.